great. So, um, Margaret, why don't we uh, kick it off and, and, and define a little bit the topic of, uh, of today. Open transformation is all about customer first, data driven and so on and so on. So why don't you give us a couple of definitions so that we're all on the same page and make sure that we understand the same thing. Yeah, that would be great. And I, I just have to say it was good I was on mute because I just snorted when someone wrote uh, the name for people from Brussels is Brussels Sprouts, which I don't know if that's funny in any language but English, but I thought that's never going to leave me now for the rest of the day. So yeah, you know, when we talk about open transformation, uh, you know, we everyone talks about digital transformation, obviously, and that's been around for a few years. And some people love talking about it, and some people are sick of talking about it. Uh, some people think it's a hype phrase. I, I probably hear every possible reaction to digital transformation. But the reality is, we are all trying to change in some way. And technology is a huge driver of that. And, you know, the biggest change is, you know, technologists used to run the business. Now we're actually being told to focus on customer experience. You know, IT needs to drive wonderful business impact. Uh, we need to innovate faster. And we still need to cut costs, by the way, and, and do everything, you know, cheaper, faster, better. Security is still on all of our plates and, and what we have to worry about. So, so why do we shift this to to open transformation. And the open piece is, is really important because we're going to touch on all the different aspects of that. But the reason we want to talk about open transformation is because the open looks at things a little differently. Uh, one is just from pure open source. What can we learn from open source communities? What do they do differently to help us understand how to drive faster innovation, which is obviously the newest innovation or the cutting edge of innovation happens in open source communities. But also how do they work together? How do they operate? It is a meritocracy. The best ideas come from anywhere. There is little hierarchy. Um, you know, they're constantly pushing each other to be better. Everyone cares about security and the quality of the code. Um, you can collaborate from anywhere, which is quite helpful right now for us to be thinking about from a, a collaboration perspective. So all of these things are really important because open does not mean insecure. It does not mean unstable. So I think what will be really interesting is to talk about this balance of open source, open innovation, open ways of working, transparency, um, how we lead through that, which is not top down, by the way, which most of our organizations, uh, you know, historically have been operating that as leaders, we made mandates. Um, that's not working so well anymore. And we can't innovate and collaborate the way we need to, to move ahead, especially during this time when everyone is distributed and remote, it just it, it doesn't work anymore. So I think, as we think about that, and, and what we need to become leaders in this open transformation reality, uh, we're gonna talk about three different things, uh, open architecture and technology, open processes and open culture. And as I think about this, I, I organize these in a simple way, if this helps. I think about the open architecture or technology as the what. What are we using or what are we doing to achieve transformation? The processes are the how. How do we need to change the ways we work? And then open culture is the why. Why do we exist? You know, why do we want to be better? How do we, you know, impact the world? So as we go through this, think about that constantly because you need all three. And the reality is too often we just focus on the what. We want technology to solve everything for us. But the how and the why are increasingly important. And I would almost say the why needs to come first. And I know we'll talk about that, Hendrik, but that, that's really how to think about this is that it's, it's transformation overall, but it's, it's pivoting or using that open at the core of everything we do. Okay, just quickly interrupting you here, Margaret. We've launched the poll. So we're gonna do four polls uh, during this. Uh, Excellent. Conference. And the first poll, the question is, which of the open transformation critical elements do you find most challenging in your organization? Is it creating an open culture? Is it implementing open processes or is it uh, using open technology and architecture? Uh, so the poll is uh, running and we'll give it a minute. Um, and so three, two, one, and there we have the results. Let me share them with you. So uh, we have a clear winner here and that is open culture apparently yep. is uh, the most challenging part. 73% of the- uh, 100%. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that aligns with every conversation I have. Like I said, that is the hardest part. Definitely. So it was a bit of an open door, but okay, we started. <laughs> It would have been bad if that had come back. Technology actually would have been like, oh, okay, we have nothing to talk about. <laughs> okay, so good we have a biologist in the call, eh? because then we can talk about <laughs> ethology and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and a theoretical physicist. Yeah. Um, so for those of you not on Zoom, not seeing the results, open culture at 73%, open processes 17%, and open technology 10%. So a clear that uh, creating the culture, the human side of things is clearly the most uh, challenging part, uh, according to uh, people in this, uh, in this conference. Um, okay, is that clear, um, Margaret? That's, that's the, what Open Transformation is about. That's what you wanted to uh, say on this? or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the one thing that isn't showing up in that poll that I know we'll talk about is, is leadership within that. And to achieve this open transformation or any change, as we know, takes such courageous leadership. Um, and I think that we should definitely make sure we talk about that because if you're going to achieve open culture, that by its very nature is going to drive necessity around a change in how we lead. Um, and so I, I think that we definitely want to talk about it. And I would love to hear from, from these other panelists of what they're finding about their own leadership. And it was in their interviews, but I think it'd be great to touch on that because there was a lot of discussion about culture and leadership.